Hello Audioholics, we are back at CES 2016 and this time we are learning about some pre-production, cutting edge, technologically advanced paradigm speakers here with Rob Sample. Rob, can you walk us through exactly what it is that we're standing next to? Well, what started off as a, an engineering concept, we wanted to see what was possible uh, when we took the restrictions of price uh, off of our engineering team. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the dream job coming to work and going, guess what? We don't have to hit $1,000 anymore or $10,000. Cost no object. What would you build if you were going to build that? It's the all-you-can-eat buffet of engineering. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And what they came up with is uh, a speaker that doesn't really have a name yet officially as a line, uh, and it is going to be a line this year. Uh, originally, uh, the code name was Ultra. Then this became the concept. Uh, 4F. The Canadians don't understand what the word 4F, what the term 4F means. So we're dropping 4F from our sure. nomenclature. But it's a floor-standing tower with not just two woofers, but four woofers. There are two identical woofers facing the back of the speaker, and they're vented through a, a, a beautiful metal mesh grill here in the back. They are individually, well, not in, they're in pairs. They're powered by a 700 watt RMS amp. So there's actually two amps in this cabinet as well. So for a total of 1400 watts RMS just driving the base section. On top of that, that base section is uh, capable of being um, EQ'd by our room correction, the Anthem room correction mm -hmm. suite, which is considered by a lot of people to be the best sounding room correction available to consumers. And um, in very quick time, you, you run a few sweeps with a mic on this speaker, another few sweeps on, uh, on that speaker, and you have taken the standing waves and the suck outs uh, that are inherent in any room placement. And now you can place the speakers where they're going to image best and maybe perhaps look best in the room and not have to move them around until the base is perfect, right? And again, that's built into the speaker built itself. Right into the speaker. Excellent. Then uh, the top part is driven passively by an amplifier of your choice. Uh, it's a mid-range, a seven inch mid-range, a one inch tweeter. Uh, they're made of pure beryllium. And I have the mid-range in my hand. Um, this is the only speaker that we're aware of under $200,000 a pair that uses a pure beryllium mid-range. It's a very expensive proposition. It's almost impossible to work with. It's, it's uh, very hard to form and, and create the kind of driver you want. Uh, we've taken a number of new steps with this, the, the biggest one being we're using an inverse differential drive of our design. What that means is in the woofer, let me just go back a little bit. And I'll show you the woofer. This thing's a beast. This is a, a new version of the Seismic 110 woofer. It's a super long excursion. It's kind of hard to see, but there's voice coil sticking out the back, voice coil in the front. Uh, there's actually two voice coils in here. One is out of phase with the other. It's called a dual differential drive, excuse me, a differential drive. Um, it ensures that with this patented long excursion woofer that there's always voice coil in the gap and um, it lowers the distortion in, in its, by being out of phase. Here in the mid-range, we couldn't uh, have two voice coils, so they flipped the phase on one of the magnets to accomplish the same type of low distortion. So the combination of the super high damping, low distortion woofer, or excuse me, cone that we're using in the mid-range, uh, and the, uh, the new voice coil uh, assembly combined with the brilliant tweeter makes for an extremely low distortion speaker. When you get rid of coloration and distortion, you increase transparency, you increase um, the ability to recreate sound stages and to recreate real voices realistically. And that's what we were after here, kind of that, that idealistic uh, goal of ut utmost transparency, and that's what we have here. Sure, and we've got the certainly a curved cabinet, which is all the rage, helps with the internal standing waves. Uh, now, is this, I'm assuming, is not only a decorative, not only a protective grill, but also serves some waveguide functions? That's exactly right. Um, it started with the, um, uh, the Prestige Series, which is our uh, you know, luxury performance line uh, that goes up to about $5,000 a pair. Uh, we call it the PPA, the uh, Perforated Phase Element line tweeter lens and it serves the function first of all of being a phase plug there's a solid dot in the center and what it does is it it stops out of phase signals 
from interfering with each other here in the room. Getting that destructive interference. That's exactly right. It's counterintuitive to even the most, uh, the smartest of, of people out there. We actually have more output in front of this tweeter than we do without that lens in place uh, because we're, we're stopping the, the destructive uh, out-of-phase information. And we've continued that into the mid-range. Now, the mid-range, it's not quite as critical, but we still found improvements with that as well. Excellent. So now I'm going to ask you to spill the real beans. Availability, pricing, let's read the tea leaves. What are we looking at? It's going to be a tea leaf uh, reading. The, uh, the production department is more optimistic than we are. And uh, uh, we're saying certainly by the end of the year, and we're really shooting for, for earlier than that. But they will be available this year. The price points will be from under $10,000 a pair for a bookshelf in this category uh, to under 40000 for this beautiful thing here. And there will be a center channel. There will likely be two, uh, excuse me, th a total of three floor standing speakers and one or two bookshelves in the center channel. So this is a little bit of a new era for a paradigm. It's a new era, it's a new territory, and I mean, in terms of capability, there is no other speaker company in the world, really, that has as much capability as we have, or oh, let me put it this way, more capability than we have. We have a quarter of a million square foot factory in in Toronto, outside of Toronto. We have one of the world's largest anechoic chambers, which is where you want to find out exactly what that speaker is doing before you unleash it on the real world. Uh, we have computer modeling. We have, we have a tool shop that's humongous. I've, see, I've seen entire speaker companies that would fit inside our tool shop. Um, and um, we, we have 3D printers, we have CNC presses, and then the wood shop, and then we make all our own amplifiers. Uh, all the amplification in here is made by us. Uh, the, on our Anthem side, our separates are made on that factory floor. Um, so we have this intense capability. Uh, and we've always kept our eyes on that, that uh, value performance uh, proposition under $10,000 a pair and now we want to go after cost no object. What this is going to compete with, Marshall, are speakers much, much larger. This base section, uh, in this room, Arc was telling us that it was going down to 16 hertz, and very, very loudly. And what this will compete with are large-scale, big, expensive speakers in the $200,000 range um, that have like massive 15s and big boxes and multiple arrays of drivers and stuff like that. And I heard plans for custom colors as well. Yeah, I mean, that's going to, you know, we have this wood shop now and and it'll be the stock colors will be black or white uh, and then the plan is that with like a six to eight week lead time you give us a paint sample or a color off a car or whatever and we'll go you know you have to go back and forth and verify and stuff but uh, once it's committed to a six to eight week, week lead time we can get them in any color you want so I, I will say I do see one significant problem with these speakers, and Which that is? I haven't heard them yet. Ah, let's <laughs> that. So less talking, less looking. Let's actually get to listening to these speakers. Indeed. So again, um, this is uh, I, I pulled my camera out of face. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We'll we'll make it work. I will review after the listening, and we'll see how this goes. Um, uh, Audioholics.com at CES 2016. Uh, thank you so much, Rob. Thank you, Mitch Marshall. <laughs>